Happy holidays, everyone. I'm going to tell you all my games of the year 2022, all the games that I played, all the games that I consider myself giving an award to, and the games that did not deserve any awards. So I have in total 22 games in this video. Hope you want to watch everything. I'm going to include a lot of gameplay footage so that you know what you can pick up also. So as I do every single year when I do a game of the year video, I put them into two sections. The games that were actually really released this year that I played and the games that were not released this year but I played them and I consider them a part of this year because I played them. So I will give out game of the year and game of the year not released. It makes sense for some people. Okay, so let me start out with the games that were not released this year. I played seven games that I find to be worth mentioning. And two of those games gets an award and four of them gets a mention. And now one of the games not released this year, but it gets a game of the year award from me it is The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. I started this year playing this game in January, 2022, and it filled my month with joy. It is such a good game and it is an older game remade and all of that so the structures of the game is somewhat uh, from that time era when it was originally from but I enjoyed it so much that it gets a game of the year award for um, previously released not released this year <laughs> Now the second game is actually Skyrim on the PlayStation 5. I have played that a ton this year, especially in like August, September, October, I don't know, the autumn, fall months of this year. I went really deep into Skyrim and I did that platinum trophy that I've been <laughs> Warning for some time. You can check that out in this video. And I mean like Skyrim is kind of the game that's game of the year every year, if you know what I mean. Now the four games that are gonna have a mention at least it is Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. I did not very much enjoy it and uh, I don't know why but I have a review up for that if you're interested in hearing what I thought. Another game that I played a ton is Chaos Bane. It's called actually Warhammer Chaos Bane and it is an ARPG and I was very hooked on this game for quite some time and it is not released this year like I said. I'm getting to the actual releases very soon but that was worth mentioning. Now I am also going to mention Scarlet Nexus, which is a game that I got really into this year. I did not get into it when I first got it, like uh, last year I think it was released. But this year I've delved a ton into it and I enjoyed it so thoroughly. I highly recommend you check that game more out. And I have a video where I talk more about it. I actually have a couple of videos uh, on my channel about Scarlet Nexus. Highly recommend. And the last mention before we move on to actual releases is Smurf Mission Relief, which is this surprising game that I found now at the end of the year, which is a 3D platformer and it is actually good. I mean, I have played so many shitty ones, but this one, highly recommend. Currently on sale also, maybe on the Switch. I think I saw that it was on sale. So that is also having a mention. Now we are getting into the actual releases and the actual official game of the year award from me. Seven games gets an award and eight games gets a mention. At number seven, game of the year 2022, I have Atelier Sophie 2, the newest Atelier game, which is the series that I love that I have introduced like a thousand of you into and talked about for years. Now it had a new iteration into the series. It is a continuation of the story that we saw in Atelier Sophie 1 but I feel like you don't need to have played the first one in order to jump into this one. It is out everywhere also on the Switch. I played it on the Switch. Pretty good game but I still have like a few things to do left in the game. I am going back to it. I know for sure that I will do that. So that is the seventh place of Game of the Year 2022. Now in sixth place of actual releases, game of the year. <laughs> God of War Ragnarok. Now I made a pretty big video on God of War Ragnarok and it is a PlayStation exclusive game. It is such a high budget game and you actually feel that when you play it. It has such an exciting story. It was the story and the fluidity of the combat, like I like to say, that made me so invested into this game. So that takes the sixth place of game of the year 2022. If you have made it this far into my video, hit like on it. 
Now on fifth place, I am actually putting Xenoblade Chronicles 3. It is such a big and open world RPG fantasy game with such a unique story. Now I am not usually a very big story person, but now I've mentioned a couple of games that actually has big and great stories. Now Xenoblade Chronicles 3, I made a review of that, <laughs> also did a review of that, and it is pretty good game, except for the blurriness that I find to be very prominent on the Switch these days. Just a blurriness overall. Now this is an exclusive to the Switch, so this is what you get. But it is absolutely taking my fifth place of game of the year. Now in fourth place of game of the year, and it is a game that I think a lot of people are gonna have as a game of the year on their lists. Uh, in their lives. And that is Disney Dreamlight Valley. Such a surprising title. You know what? I did not know about this game. I had never heard about this game until it actually just suddenly dropped as an early access though, gotta say. But the game doesn't feel like it is in early access. It feels like a full game, fully fleshed out. I have found more than 60 hours of enjoyment and fun in this game and I keep on going back to it because they keep on dropping new content and new NPC characters that has uh, more quests and it's just such a wonderful world and I like what they did with the Disney universe in this game. Absolutely recommend. And the PC version is the best version and it is on Xbox Game Pass which is the way that I play it but I also play it on the Switch and it has a cloud save so I play a little bit here and a little bit there and it's so good. Disney Dreamlight Valley definitely deserving of a fourth place. Now at a third place. It's a game that I went into like a little kid that was afraid all the time. And it was something magical about feeling so small, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Elden Ring. This game taught me a lot about <laughs> the world and the universe. No. It taught me to parry, block and roll and appreciate a progression that was not making me angry. Dying in this game did not, for some crazy reason, make me irritated or anything. It just was such a perfectly balanced hard game that it was constantly interesting and rewarding to progress in. And that is why it's taking the third place. Well at second and first place there are games that were like more impressive but this Elden Ring I can absolutely see why this is considered the game of the freaking year for a lot of people. Such a wonderful, mysterious world that really takes you in. At least that is what I felt when I played it and I need to play it even more. I want to go back to that world. I was just experiencing something new and fresh, which is something that we don't often come across if you, we have played like a thousand video games. For for the past couple of decades. So Elden Ring, third place, definitely. Now in second place, this is a game that I reviewed on the channel and I gave it a 10 out of 10. And a lot of you may remember this, some people were shocked, but I was just being honest and true to my heart and soul when I did that review. And it is still a score that I do not regret. And I am talking about Pokemon Legends Arceus. In my humble opinion, it is far superior than Pokemon Sky Scarlet and Violet. I just found such a sense of freedom and sense of wonderful exploration. I am not good at explaining this feeling that I got from this game, but it was like 1997 and I discovered Pokemon again for the first time. It sparked a feeling in me like this is the Pokemon game of my dreams that I can actually throw the balls, look at the Pokemon out in the wild. It's sort of weird when I put it like this, but I found so much enjoyment in Legends Arceus that that is the game that I want to recommend to anyone that want to jump into a 
play Pokemon game at all. I think it is the best and sweetest and most fun starting point. Now, video games are supposed to be fun and this game just nailed the fun aspect. And all of that, and then some. I can highly praise Legends Arceus. I can do so because it did something to me. And other people have said that the graphics are bad. I am not necessarily disagreeing that it could have looked better, but I have played a lot of games in my life that has crappy graphics, but are still 10 out of 10 games because of the fun and feelings that they provide. Pokemon Legends Arceus, second place in 2022. Now in first place, and I have been 100% completely honest with myself when I wrote this list, and it was a game that not a lot of people liked. So my opinion right now is so highly personal, and no one will relate. Maybe a couple of you will relate. But Rune Factory 5 is the game that I have played the most in 2022. I was the most obsessed with, like when I was not playing, I was constantly thinking about it. When I was not thinking about it or playing it, I was researching it online, I was in forums, I was obsessed with this game, and it was a spark of excitement that I am always on the lookout for when I am playing video games. It just provided all the elements that I am looking for in a video game. You have, of course, the farming and the crafting, and the action combat -y stuff and the monster taming, the dating aspects, the social aspects, the fishing and the routine of the everyday life that every day that you wake up you decide on what you want to do. And it's just such a long game also with a ton of dungeons and is not performing the best. But as you can see, that is not what I find to be the most important when I am deciding on which games that I just appear you tend to like. I was just enjoying this game because it was just so fun that I was very obsessed. So Rune Factory 5. It was quite honestly my game of the year 2022. Now hold up, I have some mentions for you guys also. I played Monarch and that was released this year. I made a quite a small video about that and I found it to be interesting. It is maybe for the especially niche category genre people, I don't know, but I found it interesting. It is definitely worth being mentioned in a video of this type. Now, Kirby Forgotten Land, I liked it, very colorful, actually solid 3D platformer, and I think the Kirby series is going in the correct direction with this title worth mentioning. Now Horizon Forbidden West, it was actually released this year and it has not gotten a lot of recognition. Now I have to be honest, I am still only 12 hours into the game because I left it, like I said in a previous video, I played it for 12, 13 hours and then I left it because I wasn't hooked yet. But from the people that were really hooked, like 100 hours in, they say it was amazing. So I have a feeling that it has potential but I haven't given it the opportunity to show me the true potential. Worth mentioning also. Now Stray was released. It was a small cat game. I recommend that you play this together with your cats because they will be staring at the screen for sure. Fire Emblem Warriors 3 Hopes. I liked it, you know, because I like the Muso type genre. But if you watch my review, you will know more what I think. I mean, the performance in the main hub, it was so bad. <laughs> But the actual battles and stuff were good. I still think the first Fire Emblem Warriors is a bit better because there are two games now and I like the first one a bit more. Never mind that. Check out my review video for more information on that one. Two Point Campus was released this year and I had a hype for the game that was uh, bigger than my impressions of the game when I played it. It was like a good game. <laughs> It was a good game, but it was not meeting my extremely high expectations coming from, uh, I almost said Pokemon, but coming from Two Point Hospital. But uh, it's worth a play, it definitely is. 
And then we have Pokemon Violet that I played now at the end of the year. I just made a video about that and it was a bittersweet glitch fest, which I said in my video. It was a game. And then we have Harvestella, which I have not made up my mind about yet, if I like it or not, or if it's just a game or such a game. It's definitely not such a game, it's more like it's a game, but it is gonna be mentioned, I guess. And now, like right now, I am playing Dragon Quest Treasures. Uh, I like it. It's uh, sort of 7 out of 10, sort of good game. It's a good game, you know. Uh, it's a bit boring, but it's sort of the comfortable boring, where you're into this routine and it's just comfortable, because you know what you're doing after a little while. It's a fine game to just lie on the couch and chill with while you're watching some YouTube videos about the universe and the four dimensions in the background, if you know what I mean. That is what I do. So there you have it. Game of the year, top seven. But I have a special award here at the end. I am giving an award for best indie game, best indie developed game. For me, was Potion a Permit. I don't know what it was, but I just really thoroughly enjoyed the game and what you did in the game it was just really well made with the hair blowing in the wind and all of that and your dog and the cute map and collecting these things and doing the thing and treating the sick people I don't know it was just such a cozy and surprising indie title that felt very fun I still recommend that <laughs> definitely recommend that so that gets game of the year indie award now that was all my uh, all my videos <laughs> sorry <laughs> now that was all my uh, games of the year i have a little package that i'm gonna unbox and it is from gamer baby that she sent over since it's the holidays now I want to know what you're up to this holiday. If you need someone to talk to, I have a Discord channel where you can find very supportive people and we hang there every day. The Discord is always open for you guys. And Gamer Baby is from the Discord. <gasps> oh, that's so cute. That is so cute. Look. En liten sörländsk julesmak. Vad syns du? Smak på kamera. Look at this Southern Norway. We don't have this up here in the north. Definitely gonna taste. Oh, that smells like, I don't know, like bubble gum. Oh yeah, that is excellent. Thank you. Vad kristerar när du är härlig? You are getting this for all the hard work that you are doing. You influence a lot of lives out there, especially mine. You are absolutely wonderful and you must never forget that. I've gotten extremely fond of you the last year. That is why I got so happy to get the opportunity to meet you. I will never forget that day. I miss you very much and I hope so much that I get to meet you again sometime. And I hope to meet the sweet Sina also. I love you both so much. Thank you so much. Love from Gamer Baby. That is just the sweetest. It was such a wonderful day. I Absolutely. Thank you so much for wanting to meet me. It was wonderful. Hope you like it. Oh my god. It's the master sword in bead form. It's just like my tattoo. I love it. Thank you so much. This was awesome. I got this from Happy Console Gamer and Family. Christmas card again this year. Thank you so much for that. You are still my favorite YouTuber, absolutely. Thank you so much. And then I found this one in my PO box. It's from Mickey. It's a PS5 horror title. I've never seen it, never heard about it. I will pop it in and check it out. Thank you, thank you so much. Now I also got this one, which is the Skull and Co. Neo Grip, which I am saying to you guys, and I've always said it, that it is the best grip for my hands and for the Switch. I am loving how comfortable these are, and that is no joke. It is way better than Satisfy. I'm just gonna have that set. And I have a link and I have a code, discount code, comes with several grips that you can choose from. So here they are different types of grips. Pretty good. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you are having a wonderful holidays. And remember my Discord is open for everyone. We are a lot of people that will be hanging around there because Christmas and holidays and stuff, it's a time. <coughs> that can be a lot of things. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you later. Next year, probably. Hallot. Nice.
Yeah. 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 Yeah.